Please be seated. The court is now in session. Before I hand the floor to the civil party to express her sorrow, we invite the Grafier Deutsche Pari to report the participants, the attendance of the individuals and parties to the proceeding. Deutsche Pari, Mr. President, in today's proceeding, all parties are present except the accused Ian Sari, who is absent due to his health. However, based on his letter of waiver document E237, he requests to waive his direct presence in hearing the testimony of this civil party. He also waives his hearing of PCCP25 that the chamber will hear after the civil party that civil party is also awaiting to be called. Thank you. We would like now to give the floor to civil party Yim Suwan so that you can make your personal statement expressing your sorrow during your time under the Democratic Campuchia. In your capacity as a civil party, you have the right to do so if you wish. You may proceed. I notice the lead co-lawyer for civil party is on his feet. You may proceed. Um, good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours. Good morning, everyone in and around the courtroom. I took consultation with other civil party lawyers and my colleague, and we decided to make a submission through the chamber that all civil parties to be summoned uh, in case 002 as a whole or 002 slash 01, that they shall also be allowed to make a statement concerning harms occurred for the entire case 002. That is our submission. And if Mr. President, wish us to elaborate further on the reasons behind this submission. I am obliged to do so. President, yes, you may do so. But so, President. National Council, Sonaron, you may proceed. Sonaron, I would like to object the submission by the lead co lawyer for civil parties for the civil party to make such a statement. The civil party has full right to appear before the chamber then there is no need for the lawyers for civil parties to encourage the civil party to make this or that a statement. The civil party can decide to do so if she wishes. President, thank you for your concern. Let me now hear the reasons for the submission by the lead co-lawyer for civil parties. The chamber will then consider that reason.
We will then give the floor to other parties as well to respond to the submission and reasons given by the elite co lawyer for civil parties before the chamber decides on this issue. So then it uh, will be cleared for everyone. Lead co lawyer for civil parties, you may proceed. But, um, thank you once again, Mr. President, Your Honours. National Defense Council, Sun Aron, which is to object. The President interrupts. Lead co lawyer for civil parties, you are not uh, allowed the floor to respond to Sun Aron's. Objection. We are giving you the floor so that you can give us the reasons for your submission. Then other parties will be given opportunity to respond or to make comments through your submission and the reasons so that the chamber will have all the reasons and the responses as the basis for our decision, and we can then rule once on this matter rather than to have it drag on again and again. But, um, thank you, Mr. President. The reasons for the submission are the following. Civil parties are summoned to appear before this chamber in the segment of case 002-01 concerning the, the false movement of phase one and phase two and Tulpu uh, Chire. It means that the hams that the or other civil parties may made are limited to that portion only, but we wish that all civil parties who are appear before this chamber could give the statements of harm concerning the entire case 002. So it is better for them to express such statement rather than try to limit their harm to the portion of the case because they are not a legal experts. In addition, their sorrow and harm are both physical and psychological, which are part of the whole case 002. And it is extremely difficult for them to limit that harm, physical or psychological, to a portion of this case. And if the civil party is given such opportunity to make a statement before this chamber, it is important for that civil party to make a complete statement. And that would make that civil party feel better. And it is also an image for other civil parties and victims to understand that an opportunity is given to such a civil party to express their statement in whole. So such a complete statement by the civil party before this chamber is important in this regard. And it, it can also contribute to the national reconciliation and thus the victims and civil parties are satisfied with the proceedings before this chamber. And in fact, the civil parties present the facts related to case 002 slash 01, but if they can have the opportunity to express the harms concerned the entire case 002, it would not take much time, much of the court's time. It may only take 10 to 15 minutes for each civil party to express such additional statement. And that would satisfy both the civil parties as well as the victims of the regime. These are some of the reasons we would like the chamber to consider. 
and grants the civil parties to express a statement not limited to the portion of case 002-1, but to the entire case 002, and allow my counterpart to further supplement my submission and reason. President, yes, you may proceed. Oui, bonjour, monsieur. Good morning, Mr. President, your honors. Good morning to everyone. I would like to simply add a few words to what my learned colleague has just stated. I must say that it is quite obvious that civil parties that wish to express their suffering globally without being asked to cut it into bits and pieces is an impossible exercise for her. We are dealing with victims who are, who are dealing with different facts, so we cannot cut what they say into bits and pieces. We cannot separate the nightmare of tr forced transfers and the nightmare of executions. We have mental uh, trauma as a result of uh, executions on the road and other uh, facts. This is global suffering endured by civil parties following a series of events that account of what they are going through today to ask a civil party who wishes to express suffering or to talk about uh, material prejudice. It's something that you cannot cut up into bits and pieces. It, it would be impossible to do so. So we should allow them to express their suffering globally and not um, make them go through this impossible exercise of splitting what they have to say. Thank you. Now the prosecution has the floor. You may proceed. Merci. Bonjour, Monsieur. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, and good morning to all the parties and to the public. I endorse the opinion of the civil parties. As a matter of fact, the uh, civil party applications were deemed admissible for the entire case 002, and as it has been stated, to separate the suffering and the prejudice between the first phase of trial number two and the rest of the case would appear to be completely artificial to me. Uh, suffering cannot be compartmentalized as one would want to do. The, um, we cannot ask the civil parties to limit their suffering or what they have to say to the immediate, to the evacuation and forcible movements. We are not asking the uh, civil party to talk about uh, the, uh, the prejudice suffered, but we are talking about the suffering that they endured and that they should share that with the public. We are not dealing with uh, a witness statement, but it is a statement that is limited to the prejudice and the suffering. And uh, w w I think w we should be more open to hearing the civil parties on the, uh, the suffering they suffered throughout uh, the, uh, the, the case uh, file, and rather than try to limit it. Perhaps my learned colleague has something to add. Chandrasmay, good morning, Mr. President, Jonas, good morning, everyone in and around the courtroom. I endorse the comment made by my colleague. It is reasonable that the opportunity shall be given to the civil party to express such a statement. It is important for the proceedings before this chamber for the public to understand clearly the reasons and the sorrows behind the application and statement by the civil parties. And it is also going to satisfy the feeling of the civil parties as well as the victims. For that reason, the chamber shall grant such opportunity to the civil parties. President Sunarun, you may proceed. Sunarun, once again, good morning, Mr. President, your honors. The reasons and the endorsement by the uh, prosecution uh, one idea that the prosecution as well as the civil parties, lawyers, 
sought in strength the civil party before his or her appearance before this chamber. What has been said this morning is actually the duty of the bench, not of the civil party lawyers. For that reason, I do not support this idea as the civil party shall not be laid to do this or do that by the council. So I am of my opinion that before the witness appears before this chamber, rather the civil party before this chamber, the civil party would have consulted already with his or her counsel and not to discuss such a matter before this chamber or try to use this time for her or for him to recollect the events that happened. Thank you. Thank you. International Council for Defense, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I hope everyone had a pleasant weekend. I just have a few points to add to what my <coughs> colleague, Major Sanarun, just said. First of all, I think we should absolutely dispense once and for all with the notion that there's going to be another trial in case two. It, clearly, we're stuck with case 002 stroke 001. That is the trial we're hearing now, and there will never be another one. I think everyone agrees with that. The second point I'd like to make, just as it's very difficult to compartmentalize suffering, it's equally difficult to compartmentalize issues with respect to what has taken place over the course of four years. Our client has been cut off on several occasions, has not been permitted to talk about contextual items, things that may relate to one thing, things that may relate to another thing. He's been forced, forced to compartmentalize his comments in this court. He is a party. So I would just invite the chamber in deciding this request to take into consideration the serious, serious limitations that have been placed on Nguyen Chia's participation in these proceedings. He has been shut down by the chamber on numerous occasions. He has not been allowed to say what he believes, what he believes is relevant to his defense case. So again, just to make the point very clear, I appreciate and I accept that it's difficult to compartmentalize suffering. It is equally difficult to compartmentalize context, events that have taken place. You can't slice things up in little units, in mini trials, as it were, and say, this is relevant, this isn't relevant, this is not relevant. We need to see things in context. So those are our submissions. If the civil parties are going to be given the leeway to talk about everything that's happened to them, allegedly, then we would submit our clients should be given as parties, as parties to the proceedings, our clients should be given equal leeway. Thank you. President, National Council for Keys and Pawn, you may proceed. Council, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. I strongly object to the submission and reasons given by the political lawyers for civil party. We already worked on portions of the case 002, and such a new submission for the civil parties to express their suffering concerning the person before this chamber that is case 002 slash 01 and which are not related to this person if it is so granted then it is a joke for this chamber because the chamber only had the proceeding before it 
the portion relevant to case 002-01 and not the entire case 002, and that would severely have an impact on the right of the accused. As the accused has not yet made such a statement or defense related to other portions of this case, for instance, 002-02, and the comments made by the prosecution that is to satisfy the grounds by raised by the civil party lawyers is unreasonable. We need to have a fair proceeding before this chamber that is fair for every party of the proceeding and not just to make one or other party happy or satisfied. For that reason, as we all know, the severance order has sufficient ground to adhere to without further amendment. And if there is such a permission to grant, then such a severance orders need to be revisited. Thank you. Thank you. International Defense Council for Kiel Sampon, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I believe, in fact, that the question that is raised uh, this morning is an important question, and I have the feeling that, uh, in the end, the civil parties are trying to provoke uh, with uh, provoke what they're trying to avoid. That is to say their client, their clients who are not yet victims, I'd like to remind this, but complainants, their clients are going to come to the dock and they're going to describe facts. And then they are going to go beyond these facts to describe uh, the harm suffered. Obviously, the facts were going to to come to will be facts that will make them lose credibility because the victims will describe harm suffered that and that seems to be the case a priori that will go beyond the consequences of the facts that they would have described so therefore this is another way dear colleagues of uh, breaking up the suffering of your clients. And so the only solution in the end is maybe the following step of this process would be to have their clients testify on the totality of the facts in the closing order. That is the logical result uh, or consequence of uh, what has been proposed to you today. And what I believe uh, now is that uh, satisfying uh, the needs of the victims here uh, and who still are complainants, and I'd like to remind you of this, is of course important, but uh, sticking to judicial logic is even more important. The civil party is telling you our clients are victims of a regime. First of all, they are complainants still, as well, in the same way the accused persons are still accused persons, they're presumed innocent, they're not yet convicted, and uh, they only represent themselves before you. They do not yet represent the regime that uh, we're trying to base ourselves on to encompass the totality of the closing order in this trial and to, s and to orient this trial little by little to a broader trial than uh, the trial whose contours you defined previously. I uh, believe that you have set limits uh, with the severance order, and it is hard to stand by the severance order, I agree, because it's a, it's a judicial challenge indeed uh, to suddenly reduce a trial to certain facts only, but 
And today, of course, you have to resist the temptation, even if you want to uh, please uh, complainants, you have to resist the temptation of letting this trial slide again uh, towards uh, the uh, initial closing order. You uh, must stay, stick to your ground, uh, even if the ground is not that stable, but in any case, you have to stick to your ground of your decision to uh, sever this trial. And this is uh, how... Uh, uh, fundamental law uh, will be uh, abided by. The President, uh, thank you. Counsel for Mr. Ingsari, you may now proceed. Counsel Angadam, thank you, Mr. President and your honors. I have been taken by surprise. A very big surprise that such submissions were made this morning. To me, such submissions should have already been made uh, in advance and that we should have been informed before they brought before the chamber, like what we did in case file 001. Allow me to remind parties that before we, anyone is allowed to express suffering, there must be assertions concerning the crimes. And here, the severance order already states clearly the fr fragment of the crimes related to be debated. We have to discuss about the cause and effect. You can discuss the effect without learning first about the course. Now we are talking about the first phase of transfer or second transfer. M please stick to these two phases. How can a civil party is expected to voice his or her suffering concerning phase three, which has not yet been debated? because it's the effect of the cause. So you can't really talk about the effect when you never been able to lay down or lay out the cause first. And it is not reasonable to do that. And secondly, with regard to some crimes, some witnesses may be here taking the stand to talk about various crimes allegedly to have been committed uh, before the chamber. And uh, with that, I feel if we do not stay put into the confined portion of the segment of the trial, uh, the statement of suffering would not be relevant. However, we are of the opinion that we are in the hands of the chamber and only the bench would be the in best position to make such a decision. The President, uh, legal lawyer for the civil parties, you may now proceed. Counsel Big Ang. Thank you, Mr. President and your honors. Allow me to respond briefly to what my learned uh, colleagues uh, in the defense uh, have been arguing. Now, in reality, practically, if you look at the civil parties before us, here she is the fourth civil party to take the stand. And she is here to express her suffering concerning the segment of this trial, case file 002 slash 1. However, she finds it difficult to limit her statement of suffering to only particular fragment of the trial because she is not a legal expert. And uh, like in the previous civil party, he was uh, disappointed by the way the chamber did not allow him to 
globally or fully express his harms, so he decided to cut short uh, his expression of his suffering because of that. And on top of this, the civil parties will be here to talk only briefly the prejudice or harms um, because it's part of how to heal the wound, how to make their grief be healed. And uh, for that, the civil party shall be allowed to express in details uh, their full suffering. If they are only limited to only say a few things, like their expression of their suffering is cut into bits and pieces, I'm afraid they will not be encouraged to speak before the chamber to express such suffering. To me, it does no harm to the chamber by allowing any civil party to fully express his or her suffering because the chamber has already allowed uh, a few of the civil parties uh, to do so and my client uh, before the chamber today has filed her complaint to join as a civil party and that her complaint covers the whole case file 002. And since this is the opportunity for her to be here with us, once and for all, she should be allowed to take this opportunity to express her full suffering. We do not know whether there is such case file zero zero two slash three or four. We are now having more than two thousand civil parties admitted before the chamber. We perhaps uh, cannot see that each and every one will be able to give full expression of suffering. So perhaps this opportunity would be best for this civil party to fully say what she wishes to say concerning her expression of suffering. And Mr. Angadam stated that uh, he was taken by surprise to me, what kind of surprise it was, uh, it is now up to the chamber or the bench uh, to um, decide upon. I am thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, and your honors for the floor given.
the president the chamber would like now to hand over to judge lavian to respond to the submission made by legal lawyers for the super parties concerning their request to allow the super party to express her suffering we hope uh, we can have the problem solved uh, by Judge uh, Lavang. You may now proceed. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. The Chamber notes that the problem that was raised this morning is a problem that's rather generic and uh, covers all of the civil parties and for this reason the chamber will request the civil party lead call law lawyers to file a submission in writing to present their position and then the chamber will consider whether it will be necessary uh, to request uh, such submissions from other parties but we have to make a decision now for this uh, witness and this will be the practice we will follow until uh, the chamber rules on the written submissions but now the chamber feels it is wise to allow the civil party to express herself on the totality of the suffering that is relevant to case 002 however if the other parties feel that some of the statements made by the civil party uh, are irrelevant the parties will be given the opportunity once the civil party has finished with her uh, statement uh, to uh, raise the point and to address uh, the um, elements of the statement that seem irrelevant I hope that all of this is clear so now for now we will let the civil party express herself freely under the condition that what uh, she states uh, is relevant uh, to uh, the case at hand and I specify that uh, the written submission we are requesting uh, will have to be filed before the end of the week Council Pekong, I thank you very much, Your Honor, for this. The President, uh, you may proceed, Council. Yes, uh, Mr. President, I simply would like uh, to ask Ms. Yeng Savon uh, to make her statement as the, the Chamber. Uh, requested her to do so to and I'd like to ask her to use the documents uh, that she may feel mm, uh, are useful to her statement uh, Miss uh, Young Savan you can make uh, your statement and you can use the document that you have prepared uh, to this effect The President, uh, Mrs. Yim So Wan, you may now proceed. Please express your suffering. The suffers, uh, the suffering uh, you had uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime. Mrs. Yim So Wan, I thank you very much indeed, Mr. President, and your honors for allowing me this opportunity to read out my expression of suffering from 1975 to 1976 I was mistreated I was accused of being a 17th of April person although I was failing sick I was still forced to work I was very young at that time mm -hmm. 
I worked at cooperatives. The cooperatives that I had been working after I had been evacuated from Phnom Penh, I had to work and live in Bo Ban commune. Gotham district. As one of the 17 people, I was accused by the base people as an enemy. I did not have enough to eat. I was given very little food, and I had no strength to work, but still was forced to work. I started to pick some co uh, grains of corns, and with that I was accused of being an enemy. I kept crying every now and then because I had suffered a great deal from this ordeal. I later was transferred to the women mobile unit. I was still very sick, but they f gave me only a ladle, a full ladle of porridge. And I was allowed to be home for only very few minutes. When I, uh, when I was at home, I was uh, accused of being too liberal. And every now and every time I recall the m moment, I am traumatized. And I am always shocked to recollect the events, the times when I were forced to work days and nights. I am a good person. I was forcing myself to commit some petty crimes by stealing to survive. Secondly, before the evacuation of the 1976, I was accused of stealing the rice. I was accused of being a bad person, and I was asked uh, to harvest rice in other location, and I was r accused of being lazy, and I deserved to die. They gave me only very little food. And at one point, before the second phase of evacuation, I said to myself, if I was not allowed to go and see my parents, I would die anyway. And I lost everything. I lost my properties, cattle, and the farmland. In 1978, my father, Toi Sum, my father's cousin and nephew, and my sister, were all executed by the Khmer Rouge at Office 07. They were killed at night after having been accused of being enemies. And I could not cry, although I wanted to cry. When I saw them being walked away when their hands were bound behind their back, I dared not uh, cry out loud 
because I was so intimidated. I had to hide the tears. We were terrified every time when the night fell. The Khmeru had a slogan to, uh, as it reads, uh, when they dig the grass, they had to root out all the roots of the grasses. And by that, uh, we were very frightened. We had encountered a lot of obstacles and difficulties every time during the regime. When I saw my father being arrested and his hands being tied up by the Khmer Rouge militia, I was shocked and traumatized and I could feel the pain, and uh, I still have been living with this trauma, and I have been admitted to the Khmer Soviet uh, Friendship Hospital every now and then to make sure I can move on uh, with all the trauma I have had, having witnessed the atrocity and the act of cruelty committed by the Khmer Rouge towards my family members and myself. I have been living in the society where I have had a lot of suffering. I have not been well educated. I have faced difficulties and all the bad things that happened to me. I had been deprived of all my education, the dreams that I would like uh, to be highly educated, uh, but uh, these dreams were destroyed by the darkest period of the Khmer Rouge. Due to the psychological impact, I try to find peace by looking for the Buddhist discipline. I became a monk, and partly I resolved the issue. I became a nun rather, and with the assistance and the trial of those immoral people before this court, I am fully confident that the trial will be fair and just. That is, for the prosecution of those leaders so that justice can be served to all Cambodians who suffered misfortune under such society and regime. And on behalf of the victims and all civil parties, I have nothing further to add, but that peace is the only means for us to look forward to. And before my appearance, before this court, I did not I ever imagined that I would be given such opportunity, but now, with my appearance before this national and international court, I am grateful to this court, and I hope that you find justice both for me and for the Cambodian people, that is, those victims and civil parties. I have suffered psychological suffering for so long 
and I did not have the opportunity to express such a suffering. And I am one of those victims and civil parties who suffered such trauma in between 1975 to 1979. And it made me see clearly the right and the wrong path. And once again, I strongly believed that this hybrid tribunal would find the right and the wrong and the justice, and that the psychological wound by the victims and the civil parties would be cured. This is all my statement, and I wish to thank the, this hybrid tribunal, and I'm grateful to your honor, Mr. President. President, thank you. Any parties wish to make observation regarding the statement of suffering by this civil party? President. National Defense Council for Insari, you may proceed. And Odom, I observe the two points. First, that the civil party shed her tears. Though I do not know exactly the reason for the tear. And it is unfortunate that she has experienced misfortunes throughout her life. It does not strictly indicate that such a suffering only existed within the regime of Democratic Cambodia or before or prior to that regime. It is unclear to me. But of course, we have heard the suffering that she expressed. These are my two observations, Mr. President. President, thank you. National Defense Council, for Noon Chi, you may proceed. Sonaron, thank you, Mr. President. Once again, good morning, Your Honors. Mr. Civil Party, may I ask you a question that is regarding the letter that you just read. Is it your own handwritten note or was it prepared for you? If so, by whom? President, I believe you were not here and you probably did not liaise with your international counterpart. In fact, on Friday afternoon, the political lawyers for civil parties request that such a statement shall be made or prepared in writing and that the chamber granted such a request. Sonarund, i just like to check with the civil party whether she herself prepares that note or whether it was prepared for her. President, that is not important, counsel. The chamber granted the lead lawyers for civil parties to prepare or to assist the civil party in preparing such a statement as we made our ruling on Friday afternoon. Thank you, says Sonarun. Council for Kiev's and thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make a general observation regarding the statement of suffering. I noted that some wordings were unclear. For instance, the use of the word uh, victims in exchange of civil parties. This shows that uh, it is uh, inappropriate to use so, because so far the chamber has not yet adjudicated on any of the accused, so the word victims cannot be used in this instance. In another instance, if the word victims are used, does it mean that this chamber extends its judicial power to 
adjudicate or prosecute the entire regime of democratic Kampuji, or rather a limited number of the accused in this courtroom. If the democratic Kampuji regime is prosecuted, that is a separate matter, and it is not related to just a few accused before this chamber. For instance, including my client, uh, Kiel Sampon, he, of course, rejects the charges against him by the prosecution. So he defends himself, but not the regime. So this point saw be clarified clearly by the chamber. In order to avoid uh, misunderstanding, as to the responsibilities of individual person or the responsibilities of a regime. Another point, as I observe, also relates to the wording used by the civil party, that's the best people, was spoken by the civil party as the 18 April people. I noticed that as well on a Friday last week, it could be a misunderstanding by this civil party, or she may mis misspeak. The civil party also spoke about the loss of properties or the cattle, etc. That is uh, an individual matter. She can, of course, express uh, such a statement, but the consequence is that if there is a legal demand by, the, by law that the civil party can express such a loss, then proper documents shall be attached to such a claim or statement in order to support in order to support the existence of such harm or losses. It cannot be considered that a spoken word to that extent can be considered without a proper supporting ground. Another point that the civil party expressed that she is happy that the immoral people are being prosecuted by this chamber such a wording is very inappropriate and, of course, it has an impact on the status of the accused. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Yamatsuwan, the lead co-lawyer for civil parties. Do you have anything else to add? In fact, the floor cannot be given to you to reply to the response by the defense teams. You already made your submission and the grounds given this morning and the chamber will rule on that matter in due course. Can you please state your ground for being on your feet, lead co-lawyers? Oui, yes, Mr. President. I would simply like to make some remarks on uh, the remarks that have been made because I deemed it necessary to do so. I would like to make some comments on the last remarks, not on what uh, you decided a while ago, but just what, you, uh, what was remarked on by the defense. President. What the Chamber would like to inform you is the consequence of our discussion regarding your request and submission as you can do, uh, delay the uh, time and the schedule. And in fact, you, so, you should have thought of that request earlier from the beginning of the proceeding rather than using this court time of hearing the testimony of the civil party.
because the schedule has been set out clearly by the, the chamber and and as just then the floor was given to the defense teams to make their observations regarding the statement made by the civil party so uh, we are uncertain whether you wish to you wish to make uh, your response now or whether you wish to include that in your final uh, submission anyway you can uh, proceed with your subject matter as you are on the on your feet already thank you mr president i think that in so far as the civil parties have the floor in these proceedings uh, they are given time, and I don't think we are unduly taking advantage of the time allotted to us. The civil parties make very pertinent remarks, and uh, we should at least have the decency of respecting what people say. Let me point out that these people were recogn recognized as victims and as civil parties, which means that they endured facts and we shouldn't mix that up with guilt which is uh, something we agree on but the character of the civil parties as victims has been recognized and I would like us to recognize that for the future so that my learned friends may give the civil parties the opportunity to express themselves because in our tribunal the position of civil parties is something that we take pride in and I thank you President, the prosecution, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. I will be very brief. Mine is only a general remark. I think that it is important to hear the remarks of the, civil, of the defense regarding the sufferings endured by the civil parties. That should be done once the civil parties have left the courtroom so that they may not be embarrassed. The defense have gone beyond what Judge Lavin requested that they should do. That is, they were not supposed to make comments on facts that were not pertinent. And I find that they have made comments that are out of place. And I believe that out of deference for the civil parties, uh, we hope that the Chamber will take its decision as quickly as possible to, to the effect that the civil parties should not have to hear the remarks of the defense regarding the sufferings that they have endured. I thank you. President, co-prosecutor, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I noticed the observations made by the defense teams. I request that the defense teams, the defense teams, shall not make such an observation in before the civil party. The civil party, of course, suffered harm physically and or psychologically. If in the future such observations are to be made, it should be made in the absence of the civil party. Thank you. President, Mrs. Jim Sovan, the hearing of your testimony has now concluded, and you are excused so that you can return to wherever you wish or to your residence. The chamber is grateful of your testimony. Court officer, in coordination with WISU, please arrange for the transportation of the civil party to wherever she wishes to go or to return to her residence. The time is now appropriate for a break. We will take a break and return at 20 to 11. Some